Bible. I got my notes. Hey, I I even got an interpreter because because I I know I talk kind of thuggy, you know what I mean? So uh, so uh, so Sister Seely, raise your hand, see how everybody can see. If if y'all Koreans got some problems with what I'm saying, holla at her. She'll 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 uh, she'll clear it up for you. Amen. Brother brother Max, brother Max, he, he got all the Caucasians and and. And y'all Fil y'all y'all Filipinos, yeah, y'all Filipinos are on your own. <laughs> Sorry, y'all, y'all ain't gonna get no edification. Amen, amen. Hey, this is this is this is real. This just tells you this is the Lord, okay? Um, Brother Jay just preached my message. You know what I'm saying? But I'm gonna preach it anyway. So look, so so look. What I want, what I want to do is um go to go to first go to first Timothy five seventeen, right? And and I want I want I want to have I want to have all the pastors and their wives stand up uh, real quick for us. Yeah, yeah. There you go. There's all the. Amen. 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 Just like you said, the pastors' wives too. They deserve. They deserve a lot of. Let's get some amens. Well, that's all. That's all. That, that's all y'all get. Oh man. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right, all right then. So go ahead. Y'all can sit down. But th thank y'all for y'all service. Cause this is a service. It's a battle out there. And, and 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 they do a good job. First First Timothy five seven. Go ahead, Five seventeen. 517, okay? The Bible says, let the elders that rule well be counted a double honor, especially they that labor in the word and doctrine. For the scripture saith, thou shalt not muzzle the ox that treadeth out the corn. Okay, then you, so you see, you see, you see all the, uh, you see all these pastors here today. We got, we got the, we got the best pastors Amen. in California. Amen. I'm talking about the best. You know what I mean? I, I'm, I'm gonna put my old pastor in there, Pastor Steve Andrews. I mean, I mean, these, these guys are the best pastors out there, right? And the Bible says that that we should uh, give them double honor. Amen. Now, my my question to y'all is, are you giving them double honor? Are you giving them double honor? I mean, I mean, I think I, I think of Pastor Kim, man, he got a lot on his plate, and I, I know a lot of y'all pastors have a lot on your plate. I mean, he he, pre he preaches five messages, four to five messages a week. You know what I'm saying? He he he's um he's go, he does soul winning. He's got all these, he's teaching all these preacher boys and stuff like that. He's got a lot on his plate, and 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 the Bible makes it clear that he that, that he's doing what the Bible says. Amen. He's, he he should be counted worthy of double honor. How you treating how you treating your pastors? How you treating them? I mean I mean I mean if you treat them bad, that's that's sad. Ephesians four eleven. Ephesians four eleven. Well, well um, if, if you can turn fast, that'll be fine. If you can't get there, you know, just just keep try to keep up with me. Okay, then Ephesians four eleven, the Bible says, and he gave some apostles, and some prophets, and some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry. I mean, if your pastor's working. You know what I mean? I mean, I understand small churches, you know, you know, pastor got to do what he got to do and the, and the congregation do what they can. But if y'all got what it takes to, to take care of your pastor where he can where he can work and feed us, man, man, fill his pockets up. You know what I mean? Because the Bible says for the work of the ministry, that's it's a work. Amen. Amen. For the edifying of the body of Christ till we all come in the unity of the faith and in, in, of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man. See, that's their job. Their job, job is to get us right. Right. Verse, verse 14, that that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. See, he, he protects us from the wolves out there. He, he, they protect us from all those things that are out there. They sacrifice their life and their time to do something for us. 
You know what I mean? I mean, and don't get me wrong, I'm really grateful for this opportunity to, to preach, but any of us could come up here and run our mouths. You, you know what I'm saying? But, but it's the pastors that back us up and stand behind us when we're down. They're in, that, they're in, they're in their rooms crying and praying over us. You know what I mean? Man, our pastors are good. Amen. One of the biggest responsibilities in the Bible and today is the, is, is the, is the shepherd shepherding the flock. I'm telling you, I think, I think they're more important than, than, than kings in these countries or even the president of the United States. We should, have our, we should lift up our pastors high and, ha and, and, and help them and love them and be there for them. You know how you're talking about people griping and complaining? Man, what's wrong with y'all? Y'all supposed to be there for your pastors. Take care of your pastors. I'll fight for mine. You know, the Bible says, you, brother, you're not supposed to brawl, but don't say nothing about me. I'm taking them out. You know what I'm saying? Amen, amen, amen. Amen. Hey, and just like he was saying, I mean, they're not gods. They're not gods. But they're God called. And they, so they deserve the respect and honor of the office. You, you can't be slapping them in the back going, hey, buddy, what's up? No. No. Slap me. I'll, I'll take it. You know what I'm saying? Amen. Amen. Don't, don't do your pastors like that. They, they deserve honor and respect. Amen. Amen. The Bible says, let elders... Uh, that rule be counted worthy of double honor, especially that that labor in the word of doctrine. And don't our, don't our pastors labor? Yeah, that's right. they, they feed us, huh? Yeah. I mean, if y'all ain't getting it, maybe you're not saved, or you just, or, or, or you just weak, or you're a babe in Christ, or you just, you just, you just bad. You know what I'm saying? You, I mean, I mean, we don't have no excuse. We don't have no excuse. You know what I mean? Uh, I mean, the IMB crowd, they got an excuse to be as flaky as they are. But we don't have no excuses. You know what I'm saying? Amen, amen. Amen. Uh... 2 Timothy 4, verse 1. You don't have to go down. I'll, I'll just, if, you, if you want to go there, that's fine. Um, I charge thee therefore. This is, a, this is a charge to the pastors. He says, I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing in his kingdom. Preach the word. Be instant, in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when men will not endure sound doctrine. But after their own lust, shall they heap to themselves teachers, having itching ears. And they shall turn their ears from the truth and shall be turned to fables. That's why we need the pastor. He gives, he gives us right doctrine and they help us stay on that right path. And, and, and if you ride with him, he'll take care of you. Say, um, Hebrews uh, 13, verse uh, 17. Go to that one. Check this one out. Hebrews 13, verse 17. The Bible says, Obey them that have the rule over you, and submit yourselves, for they watch for your souls. Man, think about what they're doing. This is a serious ministry. And they watch over your souls as, um, as they that must give account that they do it with joy and not with grief. For that is unprofitable for who? For you. Not for him, for you. You need to, you need to submit and back, and back him up. Don't talk about him behind his back and, and mouth him off like that. If you don't like him, leave. Leave. Don't, don't mess up the church because you got a problem with him. You know, you, you know what I'm saying? The, um, I mean, the, uh, the, you don't want to make him. Uh, and, and then it says that uh, they do it with joy and not with grief. You know, you want to make your pastor happy, man. You want him, you know, you don't want to make him happy. First thing, first thing to make him happy if you know you love God. Yeah. Hey, second thing, if you know he, he, you, love his, uh, you love his word, he, he loves that. And then when you love each other. You know what I mean? No, no griping and fighting against one another. Have some mercy. Have some grace. You know what I'm saying? Have some grace for each other. Amen, amen. Um, I, I'm going I'm to end it with 1 Peter 5, verse 1. 1 Peter 5, verse 1. I'll end it with that. Thank y'all for hearing me out. See this fly? This fly think he's doing something to me. I don't care. I'm just going to keep waving and preaching. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Amen. Amen. <laughs> amen. 1 Peter 5, verse 1. The Bible says, The elders which, which are among you. This is Peter talk, talking to the pastors. 
the elders which are among you, who uh, you I exhort, who am also an elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. Feed the flock of God which is among you, taking oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly, not, by fil not for filthy lucre, but of a ready mind. Neither being lords over God's heritage, but being in, in samples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd shall appear, you know who the chief shepherd is? Who the chief, chief shepherd? Jesus Christ, amen. When the chief shepherd shall appear, you shall receive a crown of uh, glory that faded not away. Now, that, now that's a special title for the pastor. Yeah, at the judgment seat of Christ, our pastors are going to stand before God. He said, when the chief shepherd shall appear, you shall receive a crown of glory. Hey, and, and y'all can't throw that at the Savior's feet. It says that faded not away. That's y'all's. Y'all going to have that on your head. And it's going to be proud, man. Can you imagine that day? They're going to, they're going to say, Pastor Stevenson, come forward. Jesus Christ, he's going to tell you that, brother. He's going to say, come forward. Right, amen? Pastor Kim, come forward. Brother Gorski, pastor, come forward. And we're all going to be standing, standing in front of him going, whoa, man. Brother Jay, he going he to say, come forward. He going to say, what, me? He say, yeah, you. He probably going to be standing next to Joel Osteen or something. And Joel, and Joel Osteen going to be like, hey, what about me? What about me? No, you didn't preach my words. Shut up and sit down. Amen. Amen. Come on up. And you guys are going to get on your knees. Be scared. I mean, it's going to be scary, but you're going to be on your knees. And the Lord Jesus Christ is just going to go, put that crown on your head. And all of us, we're going to be looking, going, yeah, that's my pastor. Amen. That's my pastor. You're going to be all happy and stuff. Amen. What a day. That's going to be a good day. Amen. Amen. But, but, but wouldn't it be sad? Wouldn't it be real sad if your pastor didn't get a crown because of you? He's going to come up there and he's going to say, hey, what about my name? Nah, man, I, I, I'm sorry. You know, your, your, your congregation didn't know how to act. They treated you bad. You know what I'm saying? You couldn't handle them, control them. Man, that would be a sad day because of us. Because of us. Amen. Amen. Hey, you preached the message already, brother, but I just repeat it. Man, love your pastors. Give them what they want. Give them money. Give them whatever they need. They should never be without they should never be without you. Take care of your peoples. Amen. Amen. Take care of those that take care of you. They're more important than anything in this world. This book that they give you is more important than anything in this world. Every possession that you own is nothing compared to this book. You, uh, so you need to take care of the pastor that opens that book with, uh, 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 weekly and gives you something out of this word so you can live for him. Amen. 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 That's all I got. Amen. Amen. It's just Brother Randy at this moment. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. You get to it, bro. Come on, brother. Man, I, lo I love you guys so much. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. You know, like, uh, I always like to see myself trying to joke around and stuff, and the closer I get to this pulpit, it's can't make any jokes, you know. Yeah, you got it. Thank you, guys. All right. Hey, but I said uh, hey, the time doesn't start until I tell you to open your Bible, so so you're good. Don't worry about it. Go all night. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. I thought Brother Randy was uh, Brother Randall was gonna take that joke, so praise the Lord, man. All right, so uh, I'm sure if you guys are coming up from north, you know you saw the uh, the reservoirs and everything like that, and there's a serious drought going on. You know, currently uh, California is in a severe drought. You know, you see your lawns; they're all brown, and your water bills are going up. Your AC bills are going up. Your electricity, all that's going real high. It's getting really hot out here. But at the same time, you're real cold for the Lord. You're real cold. You know what a lack of water means? It means a lack of vegetation in life, right? Yep, Just generally. You know, water is definitely necessary for life as well. 
You know, it's been uh, it's said that dehydration, it leads to difficulty to perform tasks, uh, to require attention, uh, motor co coordination, and executive function. So including grammatical reasoning, mental math, decision making, all that stuff, right? I mean, we saw with Tom, you know, I don't know if he was dehydrated or maybe he was just uh, really tired or whatnot, but uh, in adults, you know, loss of consciousness, improper balance, confusion, fatigue, headaches may occur. You know, what about recently in your Christian walk? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Have you been experiencing similar side effects uh, due to lack of living oh, water? Preach. Mm -hmm. preach. Living water. Maybe it's not just California. So uh, the title of my message today is uh, Bring the Rain. Yeah. So bring the rain. Come on, bro. All right, let me just pray real Get quick. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, God, I, I don't deserve to be up here, Lord Jesus Christ. I'm nothing, Father. And um, I, this, message will, this message will be nothing without you, Father. But God, I'm real fearful, Lord Jesus Christ, because this pulpit is no joke, God. So I just pray you'd please fill all of us, Lord God, with the power of your Holy Spirit, Father. I pray you preach, preach to everyone here, especially these kids, Father. They need you, Lord God. Help them, Lord God, to be just full, Lord God, of just your, your living water, Father. And I just pray, Jesus Christ, that you'd use a sinner like me. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Come on, brother. All right, go to Jeremiah uh, chapter 5. Jeremiah chapter 5. All right, now time starts. <laughs> Jeremiah chapter 5, verse 24. The Bible says, uh, Neither say they in their heart, Let us now fear the Lord our God, that giveth rain both the former and the latter in his season. He, res he reserveth unto us the appointed weeks of harvest. Uh, your iniquities have turned away these things, and your sins have withholding good things from you. Now tell me this. My first point is going to be a lack of rain. You know, you tell me. I'm sure all you guys are good Christians and all that stuff. You guys are real Korean, so you guys are real uh, disciplined and all that. But you tell me this, if you've been experiencing these symptoms of a spiritual dehydration. Come on, listen. Maybe all your aspects of life are, are, are damaging rather than edifying. Maybe all your thoughts, maybe your Bible reading is not really uh, speaking to you. Maybe you've been lacking some Holy Spirit conviction in your life. Maybe you've been waiting just for a week before you could actually start getting right. You know, have, have, uh, certainly last year, uh, last summer, I was real guilty of just living my life as a, uh, as a, as a sinner until finally I get right at summer camp. Maybe you've been just waiting yeah. when you should be doing it right now. Yeah, amen. Maybe you can't seem to hear God. You know, the preaching really isn't getting to you. You see people crying, but you don't really feel what they're going through. Maybe your Bible reading's vain. You know, you just read it over and you say, yeah, I read my 10 chapters, but that's it. I didn't get anything out of it. You know, maybe your prayers are not getting answered, or maybe they're, maybe they're just dry. Maybe they're just real dry. You know, go to Genesis 41. You know, some things, maybe things around you are also dried up as well, not just you. Genesis chapter 41. Verse 53. Fifty three to fifty seven, the Bible says, and the seven years of plenteousness uh, that was in the land of Egypt were ended, and the seven years of dearth began to come, according to as Joseph had said, and the dearth was in all lands. But in all the land of Egypt there was bread. And when all the land of Egypt was famished, the people cried to Pharaoh for bread, and Pharaoh said unto all the Egyptians, Go unto Joseph, what he saith to you do. And the famine was over all the face of the earth, and Joseph opened all the storehouses and sold unto the Egyptians, and the famine waxed sore in the land of Egypt. And all the countries came into Egypt to Joseph for to buy corn, because that the famine was sore in all lands. Maybe everything around you is dry and is famished. You know, maybe your families that you're living with right now, have they heard the gospel lately? Or have you just been griping and moaning about how sinful they are? You know, maybe it's time to let God reign in your lives. Yeah, amen. Maybe it's time to let God reign. You know, before the Lord comes, maybe it's right now, this week, you need to let the Lord come down and reign in your life. Yeah. Yeah. Go to Hosea chapter 6. Come on. You know, Pastor hyped up this message real good, but I, I'm nothing special, so. Lord, help him. Hosea chapter 6, verse 3. The Bible says, Then shall we know if we follow on to know the Lord. His going forth is prepared as the morning, and He shall come unto us as the rain, yes. as the latter and former rain unto the earth. 
You know, what's reigning in your life? What's reigning in your life? Is it the bread of money? Right? Is it your clothes? Maybe your thoughts of the world. Maybe that's what's reigning in your life. You know, are you so blocking God's reign with the umbrella of sin? You know, I was looking at, I was looking at this umbrella right here. You know what you got to do? You got to get on that pulpit and start shouting and start breaking that umbrella of sin right now. It's almost broken. Maybe you guys aren't spiritual enough, you know. You know, when you let the rain come down in your life, you're strengthened by the Lord Himself. And you become alive in everything else. You gotta let it rain. John chapter 6, verse 66, you don't have to turn there, it says, It is the Spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit, and they are life. Is that rain coming down in your life right now? That rain, that water, that word? Is it raining? You know, it's, it's a spirit that quickens you. It's a spirit that quenches your thirst and it hydrates your soul. You gotta let it rain. You gotta let it rain. You know what happens? Conviction will start taking hold of you. Just power just spews from your own your, your prayers. You know, you walk so upright that your back, uh, that the back that's been damaged from sin gets fixed. You know, those of you who've, who, who've had a spiritual scoliosis, you know what you got to do? you got to call the Father and just lay yourself down on the, doctor table, on the yes. doctor's table that's called your cross. And you got to let the Lord straighten you out. you got to let it rain. you got to let it rain. You know, in Genesis 41, before the seven years of famine happened, there were seven years of plenteousness. You know, fruit came in, in, from the, in the handful. So much even they couldn't even count it anymore. Are you able to count your fruits maybe? It should be endless, right? You know, the Lord's blessed you so much. Have you counted your blessings lately? How many pieces of paper are you able to fill? That's good. Right? It's got to fill out. You know, fruit comes by the handfuls. Imagine if you gave God a lifetime, not just seven years. Wow. Imagine a thousand years. Now it's time to let the Lord reign. Yeah. Right? Revelation chapter 20. Yeah. Revelation chapter 20. Thousand year reign. It's time to let the Lord rain. Yeah. Rain. Uh, uh, Revelation chapter 20, verse 1 to 3. Woo! And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, the, the old serpent, which is the devil, Satan, and bound him a thousand years and cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him Amen. that he should deceive the nations no more till a thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, he must loosen the little season. You know what's happening there? Look at verse uh, 4. Look at, look, at, look at the last part. It says, And they lived and they reigned yep. yeah. with Christ a thousand years. You know what you got to do? Stop waiting for a thousand years. You got to let the Lord reign in your life right now. The Lord's reigning up there on heaven on His throne. Yeah, that's right. But what about the throne of your hearts? Yeah. Is He reigning right now? Who's holding the scepter? God or you? Yeah. God or your flesh? Come on. Who's holding that scepter? Who are you obeying? Not only got to let that living water come down, you gotta, but we need to let God start reigning as king. Yeah, we know he's king, but he's a, is he king in your lives? Who are you kneeling down to? Are you saying, God, help me? Or are you saying, money, help me? Or are you saying, my friends, I need your help. I'm going to open up so much to him. I'm going to pour out every single detail of your life. And when it comes to prayer, are you just giving him, say, God, uh, can you help me? That's it. On, you know what it is already. Are you, as, are you as specific to, uh, with your friends, with God in your prayers? Come on. you got to let the Lord reign in your lives right now. Amen. You know, what's reigning on the throne of your heart? Romans 6, uh, 12, it says, let not, therefore, uh, let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body that you should obey it in the lust thereof. Yeah. You know, just like yesterday, you got to kick that dog of sin Amen. off the throne of your heart and give it to the king and let him reign. Amen. Let him reign. You know, one day Jesus Christ will reign on the earth for a thousand years and maybe in a, and then eternity. You know, but being dispensationalists, we can't wait. Why, why wait till then? We've got to let Him reign right now. <laughs> That's right. That thousand years isn't here yet. You know, look around you. Look at your hands. This is all we got right now. Are you letting Him reign? All we have is now. I'll close it with this. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, uh, verse 12. You go ahead and turn there. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 12. 
First Corinthians thirteen twelve. All right, whatever. All right, it says, "For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even as also I am known." You know, one day, one day. One day, face to face with Christ my Savior. Amen. Face to face, what will it be? Amen. When with rapture I behold Him, Jesus Christ, who died for me. Amen. He died for you too. You know, although we, all we have is just that dark glass, we need to behold it through. Uh, we have to behold through it as much as possible. Yeah, I don't really know what God's will is in my life, but I'm going to do it anyway because you're supposed to walk by what? That's what faith is, right? The substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Behold through that dark glass now as much as you can. Hold fast to that which is good. You know, one day there will be no more devil, no more sin, no more shame, no more waiting. But for now, we wait. Yeah. What are you doing while we wait? That's good. Brother Sean said in his message uh, well, last Sunday, you know a lot about a man uh, by what he does when he waits. Yes. But know this, while you're waiting, you're not alone. Amen. Jesus Christ is waiting with Amen, you. Amen. James chapter 5. You don't have to turn there. James chapter. Actually, go ahead, go ahead. Go over there. James chapter 5, and I'll close it off with this. James chapter 5, verse 7 and 8. What are you doing while you're waiting? You're not alone. It says, Be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husbandman waiteth for the precious fruit of the earth, and hath long patience for it, until, until he receive the early and latter rain. Be ye also patient. Establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. He's coming real soon. Amen. 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 All right. Give me one minute. Uh, you know, one Sunday, Jared was giving me a ride home after church. And uh, I was asking him if he had any sermons prepared, if, you know, he had anything flowing and stuff. He said, I got nothing. I'm all dry. And I said, oh, you know, maybe a uh, maybe pastor will ask you to preach at summer camp. You know, he'll say, oh, popcorn preaching just randomly, you know. And he was like, oh, I don't think that'll happen. Uh, you know, uh, probably not. And uh, I was like, oh, you never know. And then it's like, yeah, probably not, though. And, and then the following Wednesday, pastor comes up to us and he's like, I want you guys to prepare something for summer camp. A yeah. popcorn preaching. And I was like, oh man, I think, I think the Lord's got a good sense of humor. Yeah, so yeah. Um, go ahead and open up your Bibles to 2 Corinthians chapter 8. Come on, brother. 2 Corinthians chapter 8. Uh, how many times in, have you heard someone say that they wish they won the lottery? Yeah. Uh, they wish that they uh, knew a billionaire or a wealthy person who could give them a lot of money. That they could give them a hundred thousand dollars, a million dollars, maybe even more. You probably heard this too many times to remember, and maybe you've even said this yourself. Maybe you've even thought, wouldn't it be nice to win the lottery? How many times have you heard or seen people spending every moment just trying to make all the money in the world? Something that is never ending. They're just wasting away their life in a never ending cycle that will all disappear one day. And they'll all regret it. They'll all be sad and they'll, they'll realize that it's just an empty hole and that it was pointless. The devil's got them focused on money, something that will never fill a void of needing Jesus Christ to save them if they're lost. And if they're saved, the devil's got them focused on money, something that will keep them away from the Lord Jesus Christ. Keep them away from having a relationship with God, the one who died for them. The truth is no amount of money or wealth a person can accumulate will ever come close or scratch the surface of the wealth and riches that are in the Lord Jesus Christ. 
The title of this little popcorn preaching is Riches Through a Poor Man. Amen. Riches Through a Poor Man. Amen. 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verses 9, it reads, uh, For ye know, do ye know this, brethren? For ye know that the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, oh, yeah. that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that ye through his poverty might be rich. You know, there are some wealthy people who donate their money, volunteer their time. Perhaps they even have a company or, or an organization where they, where they have their people go and, and, and serve the community. And, and they give back to their community to feed the poor, provide health care, uh, do these good things in the eyes of the world, right? But nobody comes close to what the Lord did for us. Amen. Nobody comes close to what the Lord sacrificed for us. That's right. That's he left right. all His riches to come down here so we could share in that. Amen. You know, He's in control of all the riches, but though He was rich, yet for your sakes He became poor. It was for your sake. It wasn't for His. You think He had to do that? No, He didn't have to do any of that. So maybe next time you thank the Lord, you should thank Him for being a poor man. Thank Him for doing something that nobody could ever do. Yeah. You know, Dr. Ruckman said, grace is God's riches at Christ's expense. Yeah. It's Christ's expense. Yeah. So what are you doing when the Lord just says, all I want you to do is just read your Bible faithfully. Just pray. Is that too much to ask? He sacrificed everything. So what do we have to waste? And what do we have to really offer? All we, all we have to do is just read what He's given us. Just pray. Be faithful in the things that He's asked us to do. Jesus became poor, something nobody wants to do. Who wants to be poor? Yeah. Nobody does. He was willing to, to sacrifice everything, to live a sinless life, something nobody else could ever do. He was falsely accused, tortured, and died on that cross at Calvary, humbly, something only He could go through. Why? So we could share in those riches. So thank you, Jesus, for living the life I thank never could so that we, through His poverty, might be rich. My second point is, is Jesus in giving. Jesus in giving. Now why would the Lord, all-powerful, all-controlling, the mighty God, King of kings, Lord of lords, become poor? Why would He willingly choose to be in poverty instead of living in heaven as He deserved? He deserved heaven, right? I mean, He's God after all. Why would He want to come down here? Go to over to Acts chapter 20. Acts chapter 20. I think verse 35 opens up our eyes a little bit to why he did that. The Bible reads, I have showed you all things, how that so laboring ye ought to support the weak and to remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. The Lord Jesus wanted to share all his possessions with us. He wants to share it with the whole world, but the world just rejects Him, right? That's sad, but He humbly gives you His wealth. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 21-23 through 23 says, Therefore let no man glory in men, for all things are yours, whether Paul or Apollos or Cephas or the world or life or death or things present or things to come, all are yours. Yes, amen. And ye are Christ's. And Christ is God's. So if you are Christ's and Christ is God's, all is yours, then what are you wasting your time on? What are you, what are you so focused on that's more important than the Lord? What are you so focused on that takes away your time from the things that are in the Lord? You know, one day the Lord will give us sinners all things and that should make you shout and rejoice and run the aisles and make you want to sing 67 over and 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 over again. Man, praise the Lord. My third point is Jesus in love. Jesus in love. The Bible tells us the ultimate sacrifice a person could ever do. And that is to lay one's life down for his friends. You know, Jesus laid down his life for all of us, meaning he considers us to be his friends, right? Wow, what a man, what a savior. Go over to John chapter 15. John chapter 15. And we'll read verse 13. Greater love hath no man than this, 
that a man lay down his life for his friends. Jesus laid down his life for you, right? Doesn't that mean he considers you his friend? You know, we just sang uh, that beautiful hymn, you know, have I done my best for Jesus? You know, as, as his friend, have we done our best for, for our friend? The one who died for us. The one who cared for us so much that he was willing to, to leave heaven and come down here. You know, he was the only one to do that. It wasn't Mohammed. It wasn't Buddha. It wasn't Confucius. It was nobody but the Lord. You know, I don't deserve to have my sins washed away. I don't deserve the friendship of Jesus. But I sure am glad that he calls me his friend. I sure am glad to have one person call me his friend. If nobody does, at least the Lord will. People in this world will always fail you, guaranteed. They will always hurt you without realizing. They will go back on their word. They will lie to your face, deceive and trick you. But Jesus never will. Amen. He wrote everything down for you in this King James Bible. How could he go back? How could he change it? It's already signed, sealed, and delivered. It's written. It's got his approval on it. So how could he deceive you? He can't deceive you. He can't trick you. And he'll never hurt you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. My last point is, is Jesus in supply. Jesus in supply. God knows everything about you. And there are no secrets with Him. There are no secrets with who you are and what you need. But uh, I think sometimes people get confused with, with needs and wants. They think yeah. that what they want is what they need. And oftentimes, what you want is nowhere near what you need. So don't be confused, brethren. What your needs are is totally different than what you want. Needs are essential to living. You know, water, air, food, those are, those are essential to living, right? In the flesh. And if you don't have knowledge and understanding and comfort of the needs and supplies that God gives you, then your life will be filled with worry, fear, doubt, and so much more. Go ahead and turn over to Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4. And we'll read verse 19. Philippians 4, verse 19, it says, But my God yes, shall supply all your need Amen. according Amen. to His riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Amen. Your need of salvation, assurance of salvation, wisdom and comfort, those are your four needs in this life. Everything else, including money and health, they're just luxuries. They're not a need. They're luxuries. You know, uh, Dr. Ruckman in his commentary in Philippians, he says, If you need a revival, God will give you one. Oh, yeah. If you need to pay your bills, God will supply the money. If you need to be healed, you will get well. If you need to go home to glory, you will drop dead in your tracks. <laughs> if you need to be sick, no healer on this earth can pray you out of your infirmity. Wow. If you need to be humbled, the Lord will do it. Amen. Yeah. If you need comfort and encouragement, the Lord will supply it. Amen. If you need pain, the Lord will send it. Woo! And I'll add on top of that, if you need a summer camp, well, guess what? You're Woo! here. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Yeah. What more can you want than your heavenly Father, the most powerful being yes. in the universe, supplying all your needs, Praise not just Lord. some, all. Thank you, Lord. He's got everything covered. So what have you got to lose? And what are you worrying about? Amen. 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 All right, um, turn with me to uh, Proverbs 6. We've heard uh, the rooster. We've heard a few other little animals. We heard about the, the wild jackass, right? Turned into a colt. We heard a little bit of everything. So today I'm going to talk to you about the ant. All right, talk to you a little bit about the ant. I know you've been lazy. I know you've been slugging around since last summer camp. And I mean slug, right? Uh, I, you know, maybe, maybe uh, uh, I'm correcting the Bible a little bit when it says sluggard, but maybe that just should have got cut off right there. Slug, right? Because you're fat. You're leaving a trail of stench right behind you, right? <laughs> 
Let's do this. And I said spiritually fat too. Spiritually fat, right? The Lord's provided for you, right? You got good preachers. You got everybody provided for you. You got brothers and sisters praying for you, encouraging you, doing all this stuff that you know you need, right? Just like the brother just said, you know you need that stuff and you don't go get it because you got your needs everywhere else, right? And the Lord's provided for you. You're fat. So I'm going to help you thin out today, brother. I'm going to help you wake up at 5.30 and go running with us, right? Hua, hua. All right, Proverbs 6, if I could ever turn there. Okay, Proverbs 6 and verse 6, right? Uh, the Bible says, Go to the ant, thou sluggard. Amen. Consider her ways and be wise, which having no guide, overseer, or ruler, provideth her meat in the summer, and gather, gathereth her food in the harvest. How long wilt thou sleep, O sluggard? When wilt thou rise out of thy sleep? Yet a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep. So shall thy poverty come as one that traveleth, and, and thy want as an armed man. And brethren, like I said, ants are some of the busiest insects in the whole world. You see them running all over here, trying to mess up your prayer, trying to get in the food, trying to do all these things. They're busy, and they're working around. But you know what? Today, Christians are some of the laziest people in the world. They're some of the worst people in the world. And thank God that God chose the base things to confound the wise, and we got in right there. But brethren, you got to keep going up from there. The Lord's going to, he, he got you at the bottom, and he's trying to pick you on up. He's trying to pick you on up all the way up the side sides of the north, brethren. He's trying to drag you all the way up there. You feel me? And you just got to grab that hand, brethren. That's all you got to do. Thank God for summer camp and thank God for brothers and sisters in the Lord. Thank you. Thank you so much. Right, my first point today is going to be follow the leader. Follow the leader. I don't know if you know this, but ants, they all have a job. The queen isn't the worker. The worker isn't the queen. The guy at the mortuary, and yes, they have a mortuary where they, where they bury their dead. He's not the queen. He's not the worker. They stay in their position. Don't start coveting other positions. Don't start doing it, brethren. You know how these ants learn? They run in, they learn in a system called tandem running. They run right next to their teacher. And you know what they do? They put their little fillers on the bosom of their teacher. Yeah, I looked it up. It's the abdomen, bosom, whatever. Same thing. They put their little fillers on that bosom, and they put their they put their other little filler. Where do they put it? At the coattail. They put it right at their little feet. You know why? So they can follow how their teacher's doing it, and they can figure it out. And brethren, if you're ever lost, the Lord Jesus Christ dealt with people slandering him. He dealt with his brothers and sisters trying to get him out of church. He dealt with everything. If you have any question of what you're supposed to do, go read what our Lord and Savior did. But you're a slug. I know you're not gonna. Do that. I know you're not gonna do that. You're a slug. I know it. So let's do something you can do. You can look at your pastor. You can follow the leader, right? God gave us preachers and teachers to look at, to follow, to run next to, right? And to serve, to serve alongside with them, right? Well, but what are you gonna do? What are you, what are you gonna do when they start going, right? When they're not there with you anymore? When they're not in the jail cell with you, right? We think about we think about Paul, right? When I gotta put this up here, huh? <laughs> not in my head. Uh, right? We think about Paul when he was in jail, right? And, and 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 it said, right? He was singing. He was singing. But why was he singing? I bet you he knew what happened with Peter. When Peter was asleep, we're not witnessing, right? You little slug, right? Not witnessing, not doing his job, not doing nothing. Like a little slug in jail. Whoa, all sad and wallowing in your pity. And what did the Lord do? Get your butt up. Smote him on the side. Kicked that boy up there, and he got him going. And you know what? A jailbreak came, and he broke down the walls, and Peter got on out of there. And bless God, I bet you Paul knew all about that. And he said, I'm going to skip the sleep. I'm going to skip the backsliding. I'm going to have praise in jail. I'm going to preach in jail. I'm going to just let it sing and ring and pray. And you know what, brethren? I know... I know it's hard. I know you got burdens. I know you're bound in the, in the chains of your sin. I know you're in jail right now. But skip the pity party. Start the praise. Start the praise. Remember, brethren, Enoch walked with God. And he was not anymore. If you're just walking with God, you're right where you need to be to get raptured. You're right where you need to be. I know you got spiritual goals. We all got them. Bless God, we got them. But you know what the God, you know what the Lord's spiritual goal for you? Just to walk with them. Just to walk with them. That's all he wants from you, brethren. That's all he wants. Is it's easy. And you know what? 
As you've been walking, you've been watching your preachers and your teachers. You've been watching, uh, you've been watching blowouts get planned when our preachers are stressed out. You've been watching our preachers' bills get paid. You've been watching your, your food come on the table and you don't got no money. You watch that job come when you, don't, when you know I don't deserve that job. When you know I'm a dunce. I need the little pointy cap. And the Lord said, give that dummy a job. Because you know what? You know what? The stupider he is. I'm going to get right up in there, and I'm going to give them the witches of the wisdom of Christ. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The proof is in the pudding. The proof is right there, brethren. You got it. Look at your preachers. Look at the teachers. Look at your church. Look at your brothers and sisters. God is providing from them. He will provide, Brother Ralph. He will. He will provide, brethren. And you know what? If you don't give you the victory right here, woo, the Lord's got a jail break like no other plan. We're going to bust right on out of there. All the way past Alpha Draconis. I heard that said one time. I don't know what it is. We're going to go all the way up there. We're going to be going through the sea of glass. The devil's going to be trying to get on. Get off me, devil. Get off me, death. Where is your sting? It's not here. It's not here. Praise the Lord. My second point yeah. is follow the Peter. That was not a follow the Peter. <laughs> yeah. Follow the Peter. Um, once you decide to follow the Lord, you need to know how to finish. That's right. right? You need to know how to finish. Yes. How did Peter finish? He, he finished laying his life down for, the, for his brothers and sisters. Yeah. Right? He finished just like all these other great martyrs finished dying for their brothers and sisters. And you know what, brother? When ants, when their brothers and sisters die, it releases a pheromone and it draws all the ants there. You're right. You thought you were doing something killing that one. Now I'm letting you know. No, you called the whole army. You called all everybody. And you know what? And they all show up. And you know why they show up? They show up to take that dead body home, to carry him where he needs to go. And you know why else they go? They go because they know that ant was not selfish. He was providing for the colony. Wow. If he went out there and got killed, he had a mission. So that guy goes out there, he identifies his brother, he makes sure someone's gonna get him, and he pushes forward. He finishes the mission. He finishes the mission. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. He's been too good to us. Oh, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I think about Brother Chuck, you know, and he was a good brother, and we all knew he cared a lot about us, and when he passed away, we didn't have to say anything. All the men, we got together and we said, look guys, no more playing games. We lost a prayer warrior. We lost four to five prayer hours a day, and we need to pick up that mantle. We need to pick, we had sisters getting in. Well, how can we help? How can we pray? Pray. We lost the prayer warrior. We need to step it up, and that's what we did, bless God. And you know what? brothers and sisters we got brothers and sisters who've fallen out of the race who've fallen out of church and you know what i'm talking about people we love and they're not here anymore and they're just like those other ones we need to pick it up we would be dishonoring their memory we would be dishonoring them we'd be doing god a disservice if we didn't pick up their mantle and keep pressing forward and keep pressing towards the mark right god has such a great plan for you i don't remember how i was going to finish this but you know what god's going to provide for you and if you just follow that peter and when he falls you make sure that you carry on that legacy and you keep on going. You keep providing for the other ants in the colony. You keep providing for the other members in your church. You keep fighting on because this fight's a lot bigger than you. This fight's a lot bigger than you. One day you need to run and you need to have a little ant putting his feelers on you and learning how to live this Christian walk. These kids are watching us, guys. These kids are watching how we act here. We gotta act right. Amen. And we ain't going to act right, so act, act in the Lord. Amen. That's the only way you're going to get it. Amen. You ain't nothing. Amen. You're a slug. Amen. So make the choice. Yes. Stop being a slug Amen. and be an ant. Amen. 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 Amen.